Hey guys, in this lecture we're going to be talking about presentation in PA events um, and VAs. So, let me share my screen. Okay, like I said, we're going to be talking about pre presentation and visual aids, um, more specifically voice, gestures, VAs, and the PA walk. So yes, um, in general, when you're delivering your speech and speaking, you wanna really focus on enunciation. Um, this will just make whatever you're saying super clear to the audience. There's no discrepancies and they can understand you very well. Um, one thing that you can do to practice enunciation is to put a pin in between your teeth and then deliver your speech. Um, this kind of curbs your natural enunciation, so it forces you to over enunciate which will then reflect in your speech, like here's an example. In this lecture, we are talking about presentation. And that just really helps you um, over enunciate, so it's kind of trains you. Um, another thing is volume. Um, in general, you're gonna, gonna, you're going to want to go way louder than you think you need to be. Um, just keep in mind, like, people might be sitting in the back of the room. Um, maybe there's the air conditioner going, just be super loud. Um, and another thing going on to this is if you're talking about something sad or you're trying to deliver it with like a lot of emotion, you don't have to compromise volume for emotion. Um, you can do other things to make that up like your facial expressions or your gestures, stuff like that. Um, but not, try not to compromise volume ever. And then going on to emotion. Um, so yeah, when you're talking about something when you're trying to deliver a speech with emotion, give the correct amount of pauses so that your audience can comprehend what's going on. Um, also using facial expressions and just kind of reacting. If somebody was telling you this news and you hadn't already researched and written a whole speech about it, how would you react? Think about that um, and give the audience the same space to react that way. And then facial expressions, let your face show what you're talking about. This is something that um, is surprisingly really hard in PA just because you've already written, memorized, um, and researched this whole speech. So it's kind of easy to go monotone, um, but you need to remember that whatever you're talking about has true emotion and you need to show that within your face. Um, yeah, so I guess the, the really important thing about PA and speaking with emotion is try to internalize what you're saying and the impact of whatever your message is um, and show that through your face and voice instead of just going monotone because you've rehearsed the speech many a times. So yeah, another really important part of VA, I mean, PA is gestures and you use your gestures for two things to illustrate something or to emphasize something um, gestures are really important because they give the audience visual cues as to what you're trying to say and some general things about gestures are to keep it like a grapefruit cantaloupe size like your hands around that size um, that's just kind of like the sweet spot of how big or small they should be um, and keep them at your sternum level sternum is like right here if you don't know but um keeping your arms at your sternum level is best it's it's not too low that it distracts the audience from your face but it's high enough that you're enhancing what you have to say um and then another thing is just keep your elbows bent that kind of goes with the, the size you want um, always be making eye contact with somebody in the room don't just scan over um the room and look you should scan to look at one person and then another, and then another, but don't just like look back and forth across the room and never make eye contact with someone. Um, eye contact is super important because it forces your audience to listen to you. And of course, things might be, it, things will be a bit different this year with a lot of tournaments being online, but in general, like make eye contact with someone. And then in terms of online tournaments, always make sure you're looking in the camera. Um, I guess I'm kind of doing a bad job because I'm looking at my face in the Zoom call right now, but you always want to make sure you're looking at the camera so when people are watching your speeches, they feel fully engaged and that you're speaking fully to them.
so yeah, here's gestures um, continued. Um, gestures are weirdly very hard for some people. Um, just because it feels awkward when you've never, and you might not be like a very hands-on talker, I obviously am, but um, you you just need to trust, um, you just need to trust your body and then like your hands will follow. Your hand, if you let your hands be where you want, that it'll instantly become more comfortable um, and just kind of letting them naturally react. And that's a good way to find where you need to gesture. You can put your hands in your pockets um, say your speech and wherever you feel like you naturally want to take your hands out of your pocket That's probably a really good place to gesture um, So yeah, just delivering with correct emotion making the face you want That you think corresponds with what you're saying and your voice and gestures work will follow that kind of like what I was saying um, And then gestures work really well on numbers verbs and adjectives So those are just kind of some general places where if you really are struggling with them you can put them but um gestures do come pretty naturally to people but if you're one of those people like me this is one thing i really had to work on then um just kind of let it come naturally let your hands go where you want you might have to write in some gestures to start them yes. so in pa there's this thing called the walk and Essentially, it's when you're delivering your speech, you're moving to different parts of the room to help the audience visualize the structure of your speech. So you're literally moving, you're moving from point to point, you're going to physically walk to a different spot when you're delivering a different point. So um, as you can see in this little diagram I built, if the audience is there and you're facing them, then you're going to start in the middle, deliver your intro. And then you can go to the left or right, deliver your first point. So for info, that'll be thing or um, uh, pass. And in oratory, that will be problem or cause. And then you'll go back to the middle, deliver your second point. So this will be assertions, present, or effects slash um, cause. And then you'll go again to the right, deliver your third point, which is going to be either solutions, future or implications and then you come back to the center and deliver your conclusion so that's a bit confusing and um it'll make much more sense when we watch some speeches but it, it just it's really helpful for the audience to um visualize what you're talking about and when you're moving on from topic to topic yes oh and just another thing about the walk is you're going to be you don't um, stop talking when you walk you're going to be continuing to tell your transition phrases as you're walking to the next point so, yeah and then here's just some like general stuff about visual aids um, they can be very daunting uh, especially when you haven't seen some in person but visual aids are like we talked about kind of just classic boards are the typical thing but you can bring in any objects you want um, and if you do do boards, they typically stand on a little easel stand. Um, you can get a lot of this stuff at Office Depot. That's where I got all of mine, um, my stands and the boards and my supplies every year I've gotten there. So yeah, in general, d VAs demand necessity. Like you, whenever you use a VA, it should be enhancing what you have to say, not just there to look pretty or to, um, just for the sake of having a VA. You want, um, the VA to be necessary, but necessity does not equal boring. Um, you can easily, you can easily get VAs that are necessary to your speech, but also enhance it and aren't just, um, I, I think a lot of people have a misconception that, oh, I need a VA here, so it's gonna look boring. Like the fluffy, fluffier VAs, like um, pretty pictures and stuff. Like that's what the audience wants to see. Um, but that's not always true. Um, you can even make interactive VAs, which are really cool. And then cover boards is when you have like a blank board on top of your um, other boards. Be and this is just really important when you're not referencing something in specific to have a blank slate on top so it doesn't distract the audience from whatever you're talking about. Um, take care of your VAs, create them well. You really want to avoid folding them or creasing them, damaging them, stuff like that. Um, another thing is just try not to get excess glue. 
because that can be distracting. And, like, the main reason is that's just distracting, and chances are you probably spent a lot of time and money on making VAs, so you want them to last a long time. Um, so yeah, some places to get pictures, some high quality prints, and you definitely don't have to do this. You can draw or um, cut out paper, what, whatever you want. But um, if you are interested in getting some high quality pictures, Costco, Sam's Club, and Office Depot are some really great places. Um, I haven't personally gone to Costco or Sam's Club, Office Depot, um, fairly cheap, fairly cheap. I'm sure Costco and Sam's Clubs are a bit cheaper though. Um, as for adhesive, double-sided tape, glue, spray glue is a really cool one. Spray glue doesn't work very well on just like thin sheets of paper, but on images, it's, it's very good. It's very nice because it covers everything um, in an even layer. And then, yeah, so when you're giving your speech and you're doing setup and takedown of your VAs, you always want to check if your boards are in the proper order before you speak or even before you get into your room. And, of course, this is going to be a little bit different for um, online tournaments because you're going to have your VAs set up before you start recording. But um, if we do go back to in-person, you always want to make sure your boards are in order before you enter the room because that can just – it's very distracting to the other people. Um, and you don't want to waste your judge's time by adjusting your VAs. And then, yeah, you want to center your VAs on your stand. You don't want them to be falling off because there's nothing more embarrassing than your VAs falling off the stand mid-speech. Mid so, yeah, here's just more information about VAs. Um, you should never assume that there's going to be a table in the room that you're speaking. Um, don't plan to put your VAs on the table when you're done. You should always plan to like put your VAs behind the rest when you're done referencing it. And of course, sometimes there will be a table and that can be helpful, but you shouldn't practice like that. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, you can also bring objects in for VAs, like one person brought in a ukulele. Um, and this can be really cool, but again, going back to VAs demand necessity, only bring it in if it's going to enhance the speech. Um, if you're bringing it in just for the sake of having a cool object, then you probably don't need it, and it's kind of just distracting for the audience. So yeah, so citing your VAs, you just need to be ethical about where they're from. Um, I, you want to cite your VAs. A lot of people, what they'll do is um, they'll just put the title of the website where they got the VA from. Like, they'll cut out a little strip of paper and it'll say WashingtonPost.com. Um, this especially applies if it's a huge picture or a graphic. A lot of times you make your own graphics on VAs. In that case, you don't need to cite images. But if it's an image, you need to like print out a little strip of paper that says WashingtonPost.com and just paste it on the bottom so you're properly citing it. And so yeah, just in general, for success with VAs, um, you, they need to be necessary. You don't want to just use VAs. Um, you don't want to just have VAs, you want to actually use them and make sure they're helping the audience understand what you have to say. Another huge, huge thing is you need to practice with your VAs. It's much harder than it seems, and it's not hard at all, but um, not practicing with your VAs before giving your speech for real will set you up for failure. So yeah, and then if you're wondering where to start with a VA, you can always just find an image and then create them around that central image. Um, that's a great way to just start or finding a graphic or something like that. Um, and yeah, most things can be done with tape, Velcro, magnets. Um, images you do want to paste down typically, um, just because, just for the nature of an image, I guess. There's a bunch of different things, um, exclusions, but you can always, Velcro and magnets are really cool if you want to have interactive VAs and put stuff on, take them off, um, move things around. So yeah. Oh yeah, so that's the rest of my lecture. But, oh, I'm a little bit confused. But um, yeah, so that's presentation in PA events.